No. Okay, good deal. So today I wanted to get into um, momentum and how I scalp every day. Um, so one of the first things I do in the morning, um, I go to finviz.com. Um, and this is just a stock screener uh, for anyone who isn't familiar. Um, and basically what I'll do is just go here from the homepage to my screener. And there's a couple different tabs here. Um, I'll go first to the descriptive tab. Um, and I'm going to screen the market for volume. And so I usually won't do this until around 10 a.m. Um, just so I can give the market a little time to kind of settle and pick a direction. Um, but from here, I'll go to current volume and I'm looking for volume over 20 million. Um, I just want to see who the big movers are in the market. Um, so I'll double click this and sort it out. And so this gives me a nice list of, um, of the movers. And so another thing I'll do Sorry, there's ads on here. <laughs> Another thing I'll do um, is go to here where it says option and short. Um, and I wanna make sure this is something that's optionable um, because I do like trading stock options. And so this gives me a list of the top volume stocks right now um, that have options available. And so I literally will work my way down this list um, on my charts, I'll add these to my watch list. And another thing I like about this that I'll sometimes do um, is come over to the technical side. And you can actually look for RSI, like overbought or oversold RSI. Um, you can look for patterns, like if you're familiar with like your candlestick formations, um, you can drop down, you can find your wedges, your resistance, um, your double tops and things like that. Um, also, you can find individual candlestick patterns that if you're familiar with what they mean, um, these can help you find different movers as well. Um, so I'm just gonna go back over into trading view. Um, this is where I chart. Uh, and here's the three stocks that I was going to look at with you guys today. So the first thing, like I said, that I like to do is give the market a little time to settle. Uh, so I don't really jump into anything until around 10 a.m. Um, but what that allows me to do is see like a morning high, I get a morning low. And then from that point, I can kind of plan what I want to do from there. And so looking at Boeing this morning, um, they actually rallied off some news. They had, I think United Airlines is going to purchase some planes from them. Um, and so I'll go into my drawing tools here um, and I go into my fib retracement. And so um, of course, up until the morning, you know, all this hasn't even happened yet. So we're just gonna look at here to here. Um, so you have this nice rally from open um, and then you're just gonna draw your Fibonacci line from your low to your high from that point. And so I can see here that we did bounce off this fib level, um, which is really cool. So that's a nice little, um, if you're into scalping, that's a nice little move. Um, but then we rejected, uh, we retested this fib level here, the 61, um, and we rejected that too. So uh, that here would have been a nice put play. Um, one thing I like about the Heikinashi candles, which are the candles that you guys see here. Um, let me zoom in. Um, these candles, they tend to form, they form from the middle of that previous candle. And so it's kind of like a tug of war. Um, you have your buyers on the bottom, like pushing the price up, you have your sellers on the top, like smashing the price down. And so you can get a really good idea of how strong um, the trend is. So here, like these are super bullish candles here, um, but up here, um, you can see that this high of this candle wasn't as high as this one. Um, and then our red candle came in. And so uh, one thing that I, I really say to my students a lot is like use all the tools in your toolbox. And so even if I see that this candle here is green, um, for someone who's brand new, they might not understand um, the significance of this. And so looking at your MACD, um, I can also see that the price is in a reversal. Um, when you're looking at MACD, uh, this, this green line here, uh, this is your MACD line, your red line here is your signal. And so if you look at these like thicker green bars, that's like really strong momentum and really strong buying. Um, and this is like your reversal coming in. And so here are your sellers, your strong selling, um, there's a little bit of a reversal and then your sell off continues. And so, um, and also your RSI, um, the RSI over 70, that's your overbought. Um, so we can see here, you know, we had this huge candle, here's our little green guy and we can see that we're in a reversal, a reversal pattern. Um, another thing that's really cool with this MACD is how far the lines are apart. And so when the lines are super far apart like this, um, that's really strong movement. Um, if you go back to yesterday, um, they're hugging, <laughs> the lines are hugging. And so this, even though they're crisscrossing over each other, there's no momentum there. It's, it's flat. Our price is totally flat. Um, another thing that I like to do is use my, not only my volume, 
um, but also the moving averages, um, the exponential moving averages. So I like the 10, 20, 50, and 200. Uh, typically, if your price is trading above uh, your 10 and 20, you're headed up. Um, once you start kind of retesting those, um, that's kind of a sign that you're heading down. Um, you know, breaking down below that 50, uh, that tells me we're really heading down. And then once you break below that 200, um, that's pretty much, you know, that's a really strong downtrend. And if you look at Boeing today, after this rally, we busted through all of our moving averages. We bounced off the 200 here, retested all three of the, the 9, 13, and 50, um, and we broke way, way down. And so now, um, one thing I like to do as well, I think sometimes when people are new to the market, um, they get really excited and they want to trade, you know, all these different stocks that are on the move at the same time. Uh, but one thing that I found that that works for me is like playing both sides of a stock. So I might play a stock on the downside and then I might play the reversal, then I might play it down again. So that way um, I'm already familiar with how this thing moves. I'm familiar with, you know, what the buyers and sellers are feeling for that day. And so it kind of takes out some of the guessing. Um, there's not so much guesswork. So I can see here, um, now that the stock has moved, I do tend to move my fib around with it. Um, so now I can see that we're sitting here, um, you know, we're kind of consolidating a little bit here uh, at this 88%. And so for me, um, we haven't crossed over the 10 and 20. It's like retesting those now. Uh, but for me to see this now, I would, I would assume that we're gonna continue to head down. Um, unless, you know, some huge buys start coming in, our volume is a little flat now too. Um, I have no reason to believe that this is about to rally um, or that it, it'll just continue to break down. Now, I do see that we bounced off this fib level. Um, so that is something to watch for. Um, so if we, you know, break down again, I would watch for this to break this fib level and then continue down. Um, another thing I would say here at this point, if we do cross over our 10 and 20 moving average, um, I would keep my eyes on it. If we cross over the 50, um, you know, if we open and close over that 50 and you see some buyers start to step in, you, you could see a rally there, um, especially if it goes over the 200. So it's kind of like, um, there's just different levels. I like to say just different levels to how strong your trend is, but those moving averages, they really, really help you kind of navigate the market. Um, so for this today, uh, this was a nice call option. If you're, if you're really strong on charting, um, then you can scalp that open, but if you're not, if you're not comfortable charting, you really want to wait and let the market pick a direction before you hop into it. Uh, cause those reversals after open are, they're serious. So if you can see, if you would have jumped in here, uh, you would have lost some money on a call thinking that was going to continue up. Um, another thing or another stock I was looking at today was wish. Um, they had a ton of volume. Boeing was more of a fundamental play, but wish was, um, off of the volume. So again, if we go back to open, and I have a fib on here from earlier, I'll take that off. <laughs> so we can fib this one out too. Um, so again, 10 a.m., you really had around, around a drop around 10, but if you go back to 10 a.m., we did have a double top form there. Let um, me see how it kind of bangs its head here twice. Um, that's, a down, that's a downside. So I'm just gonna fib it from here to here because we, we wouldn't have seen all the rest of it until a little later in the day. Um, but again, we had this nice rally at open um, and then we completely sold off. And so um, this has a really similar pattern to BA actually, um, but you can see the double top here and it continued down. Um, now over here on Wish, um, this thing retested the 50 earlier. And so you can see uh, once it broke uh, the 50 and 200, you had some buyers actually step in and rally this thing up. Um, we did get up to this fib level and, and double top again. <laughs> you see those two candles, they kind of bumped heads on that fib level. And then we came on back down. Um, we broke below our 50, we broke below our 200 and we sold off. So that right there, that's a really nice put opportunity. Um, and wish, let's see where we are now. Oh, this was actually uh, Friday, sorry guys. So this was today, um, this was today, same, same deal. We had a rally, sold off. Um, retested this fib level again, completely sold off again. But you can see like using your, uh, and these are exponential moving averages, but using these as kind of like, um, I call them training wheels, um, but they can really help you, you know, get acquainted with, with direction and momentum. And understanding these candlesticks is another huge part of that. Like for example, let's look at, let's just look at where it's at now. All right, so you can see Wish likes to double top. Um, this is like the third one from today. 
Um, but here again, we retested our 50 and 200, broke them, and then now we are heading back down. And you can see here, um, this is interesting candle here. Um, this candle here, this is called a Harami. Um, it's not completely done yet. I believe we still have three seconds, but this is a Harami. Um, and so basically that means pregnant in Japanese. Um, and so whenever these happen, uh, this is typically a reversal pattern. So I have this huge red candle, a flat top, which is a really, really bearish candle. Um, but this little guy, my buyers have pushed the price up from the top. My sellers are still there, um, but the buyers have, you know, kind of made themselves known. They're here now. So um, anytime you have a candle with the full body and both wicks inside the previous candle, that's a reversal pattern. And here you can see the buyers trying to push this thing back up over your 10 and 20. Um, so I would keep my eyes on this. You see the MACD reversing. Uh, typically, though, when you're in a downtrend, um, a lot of times your stocks will retest these moving averages and reject them and continue. Um, so I really wouldn't consider this an entry point until we were fully over um, these moving averages. So this is a cool thing to kind of watch and see which way the stock moves. Um, but once it does pick that direction, that's when I take the opportunity to get in there because Wish has crazy volume today. Um, and then our last one, Microvision. This one, um, I feel like Microvision was made for scalpers. Um, but again, here's our, at that point, this was our morning high. This was our morning low and I drew that backwards. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> so you draw from your low to your high. All right. And so I can see here um, that we immediately bounced this morning. We had a little bit of a dip and we bounced and broke all the way up. Where do we go? 24.66. Um, so at that point, I'd move my FIP right on over here. Um, and I can see that we had trouble getting back there um, and we started to trend down. So you can see right on these nice FIB lines where your stocks are going to have trouble. Um, and you really want to, on those uptrends, um, you want to buy the pullbacks. Like if your stock is trending up, you want to buy the pullbacks on your FIB. For example, here, right? We're trending up. So on this pullback, that's when I want to buy because we're heading up and that's when you get in. On the downside, um, you want to buy the rallies, or not buy the rallies, you want to sell the rally. So you want to run your puts when you're trending down. Um, that's when you want to enter your puts on those pops, because that's when you're going to catch the drop. Um, so that's kind of my, my rule to live by when you're fibbing. Um, and that can go on short term as well as long term. Um, Boeing, for example, I actually like to trade Boeing long term, uh, just because the patterns are so strong on the stock, like it's insane. Um, so if you go to your daily candles, this is going to give you one candle for every day. Um, I can li literally look at BA and it's so predictable. Um, it runs up, bull flag runs up, makes this huge flag. And then it just, it just repeats this thing. Um, another thing I've noticed with Boeing, they have, um, their PR machine is real. Like they, the articles drop so strategically. Um, like Boeing just had this cooling off period. And then today they got this awesome press about United and they rallied. And so um, for me, this is like my opportunity to kind of step back into BA and continue to ride this thing back up. Um, granted, you know, there are market factors that go into that, but you can see here, we bounced right off that 200 um, last month. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much my strategy. I like to just wait until the market picks a direction and just follow the volume, um, literally just follow the volume. And now the volume is not always perfect. Um, I mean, not the volume, the market isn't always perfect. You have outside factors like economic data and things like that. Um, but the candlesticks and the moving averages in, in conjunction with your MACD and RSI, they really will, um, I believe they really do improve the winning percentage. Um, you just have so many things that are telling you what to do and how to move. Um, in BA, we've, looks like we're heading back down, so. Um, I feel like that's a really short presentation. <laughs> it's only 11 minutes. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Let's see. I can pull up a different stop for us to look at. I don't want to. We can look at Apple. I'm trying to stay away from like the meme stocks because I feel like they don't always follow the rules. Hey, Elena, you're able to see the chat, right? Yes. 
Okay, just making sure. And then ask, how do I screen for candidates to trade? Oh yeah, so over on Finviz, um, typically I just, I really work my way down from the volume. Um, so Sundial would be the top one for today. I don't really care for Sundial, so I'm gonna jump down to Oxygen, um, OCGN. Um, but really I'm looking for something that's got heavy volume because um, that's the biggest thing because with stock options, we can we can play the upside or the downside. So it doesn't really matter which way it's running as long as people are trading it and it's running somewhere, we can catch it. And so, sorry, I have ads on my canvas. Um, so I'm gonna pull up, let's see, Oxygen is what I said. All right, let's OCGN. I actually have no idea what Oxygen does, but I pretty much trade them on a weekly basis just off their chart. All right, so for today, this is a little flat today. Let me do a five minute candle. And we'll fit this one out too. All right, so you're just gonna draw again from your low to your high. And then we can go back to our one minutes. And so Akijan had this huge sell off yesterday or not yesterday, this morning at open. Let me go back over here. So we had this huge sell off, we dipped down. Um, you can see um, you had some buyers kind of step in. Um, again, 10 a.m. is like my rule of thumb and here's our 10 a.m. Um, so by 10 a.m. we've already double topped. So that tells me we're heading down. Um, Oxygen today, let's see, let me add it over here too. It's a little flat. It's actually a little flat to be honest. And when you're looking at um, like options and things like that, you always have to remember that you have time decay that you're dealing with. And so if you see something that's consolidating heavy like this, or even here, um, I probably wouldn't have even touched it. I feel like this was the move here. This was a really strong move here. Um, but the rest of this to me is just time decay. Um, so I probably wouldn't have even touched this to be honest, but you can still see um, it's staying underneath these moving averages. Uh, it retested here, um, your 50 but it broke down below it. So this still looks very bearish to me, um, but it's just not, you know, it's not running down. It's just kind of like they're walking it down. So um, yeah, it's still bearish, but again, uh, I like to scalp and be in and out of things. So I don't want to sit here all day and wait and see if this goes any lower. Um, I'd probably find something else that was a little more directional. Um, Boeing, yeah. All right, so for Boeing, um, let's see. I'm gonna go back to my daily chart. So another cool thing that you can use um, when you're charting, I like to come, come to my daily chart and look at the actual candlesticks. So like at the top here, you can see where the price has opened and closed. So like, for example, um, yesterday, the high was 253, uh, the low was 247. The day before that, the high was 256. So I already know like, you know, the high has the high is lower, right? We have lower highs. So that's kind of bearish. Um, but looking at this candle here, um, I can see that the high today was higher than the, the high from yesterday. So that's actually telling me we may be in a reversal pattern. Also, I can see the buyers have pushed this up and my sellers are still there. They're still pushing it down right now, but the buyers have kind of pushed the price up. Um, so now, you have a couple options here. Your RSI um, is a little flat right now. Your MACD um, is still in a downtrend technically, but it looks like it um, it's just kind of moving sideways too, honestly. Now this isn't a reversal pattern, but I would honestly need more information before I, I made a decision on this. Um, I don't really like to jump into things without a clear cut direction. And so for this, I may give it a day or two to, to figure out what it wants to do. Um, otherwise you're gonna jump into a little indecision here. Um, so you want to definitely wait and see what happens. Again, I think Boeing, Boeing is very, very heavily uh, weighted in the Dow. And so when the Dow struggles, Boeing struggles too. Because um, the Dow kind of was up earlier this morning and it kind of sloughed off too. So, um, so yeah, I think when the Dow has a green day, I think we'll see this kind of break out of this consolidation here. But for now, um, I'm just going to show you the vertical line tool. That's really cool. So if you go into your drawing tools under your trend lines, I like the vertical line. Um, if you're planning out like swing trades or anything short term, you can definitely come here. I'm just going to copy and paste this guy here. All right, here's another one. Um, and you can pull out, you know, different time frames. So if you want to see um, how this has moved, let's just do a couple of days here. 
and you can go into your five minutes and then your lines are there. So you can kind of see how this thing is trending um, depending on what you're trying to do with it. And this is a little choppy to be honest, but nonetheless, um, this gives you a little bit of a window into how the price, the price action is. And if you can notice, Boeing is really hanging out here. Um, it's really moving sideways and hanging out here and it has been for a couple of days. So to me, unless we break below this level here, I have no reason to believe we won't, you know, break out of this consolidation to the upside. Typically when you consolidate, um, you continue that previous pattern. Um, so this is still something you can trade, but now you know where you're consolidating, you know you're low and you know you're high. So you wanna place your trades based on the range that we're trading in. You don't wanna go you know, way out of the money on your calls or way out of the money on your puts because you see where this price is moving between these ranges. Um, so that's another thing I like about the FIB. Um, but that being said, if you are someone who is in BA long-term, this is gonna be, you know, this would be your support level that you wanna enter in your position. Um, now, if we break this level, of course you can short it and run it down, um, but you always wanna get in at support when you're playing the upside. You always wanna get in at resistance when you're playing the downside. So if I wanted to run puts on this, I would wanna run my puts up here somewhere um, and ride this thing back to support. And so your strike prices, they really should kind of correlate with your price levels. That way you're gonna, you know, you're gonna increase your percentage to profit. Um, I know a lot of times beginners will see like way out of the money strike prices and they, they think it's a, a good deal because it's really cheap. Um, and sometimes you can go out of the money. You just wanna make sure that you're, you know, you're gonna be in profit at some point. And that's really where your Delta comes in. Um, the Greeks are super important on your contracts. And so um, using your Delta can help you too. Um, I like to use uh, at least the 0.3 or higher. Sometimes I'll go a little closer to the money. Um, sometimes I go in the money. It just depends on what I'm trading and how much capital I wanna put into it. Let's see, did anybody else have any questions or any stocks you wanna look at? And Boeing has a little Harami candle now on the five minute chart. So you may see some buyers step in there. Beyond, and there's some buyers on our one minute chart. <laughs> Amazon, Amazon is consolidating. <laughs> All right, so for Beyond, let's see. All right, here's our open. I'm gonna go from our low to our high for the day. All right, so there were some opportunities and beyond today, um, downside and upside, which is the cool thing about options. Um, now you can see uh, right now beyond has just rejected this 50 for the second time it looks like. Um, and you've got some sellers stepping in here. You also have your MACD dropping, you've got your RSI dropping. Um, and now if you notice, we bounced off of this level twice already today. Actually three times, we bounced off of it here too. So we've already bounced off this fib level three times. It looks like it's wanting to head back down there. Um, so it's kind of in limbo. So I would keep your eyes on this um, right now. It's bearish to me, um, but it could very well bounce off this fib level and just kind of play ping pong all day here. Um, unless you can break over this uh, 50, you're really not gonna see a ton of buyers step into this stock. So it may just move sideways for the rest of today, but it's still pretty early. So you could absolutely see a reversal. Caterpillar, I actually really like Caterpillar. They just increased their dividend. All right, so. Everything is down today. Let's see. So we're gonna fit this from our little or high. All right, this guy is literally sitting on support still. Um, you can see it retested that uh, 10 and 20 and it rejected it again, retested again here. We broke down below it again. Um, and now if this breaks, um, I would expect a little bit of a dip on this. If this candlestick drops below here, I would definitely expect more of a dip. Um, your RSI is oversold, so you may see a little bit of a, or not oversold, it's almost oversold. You got a little bit more pullback to go, um, but you really don't have a ton of buyers here today. There's just not a lot of buying on this today. Let's see, 
Amazon. Amazon was up earlier. I don't know if they're still up today. Oh. That was a nice bounce that open off the 200. Let me get on a five minute real quick. And one thing that's really cool about these drawing tools, um, you can actually draw on a larger time frame where there's less candles and then, um, what am I saying? You can draw on a larger time frame where there's less candles and then go back to your smaller time frame. Because sometimes it's really hard to like find the tops and bottoms of these uh, candles when there's so many of them. All right, so I'm just gonna reverse this fib because we've actually broken out of it. Okay, so if you can see, Amazon has banged its head here twice. Um, you can see, if we zoom in, um, there's a little indecision here. Uh, it's trying to break below your 10 and 20 MA. Um, right now it's literally sitting on the 20 um, and you've got some sellers here. So your RSI is dipping, your MACD has got some sellers, um, but the buyers are still kind of holding this up. It's like they're trying to prevent this from what's about to happen. Um, but nonetheless, they're holding it for now. Well, it looks like the sellers are coming in. Um, but yeah, so you will just watch your candles. Um, and let me go back to the one minute. We can see what's happening a little closer. That's a five minute. I typically like, um, well, it depends on what I'm trying to do, but I like the one minute, the three minute and the five minute. Sometimes I'll go to the 15 minute, um, just depending on what I'm trading. Um, I know uh, <laughs> this goes down into the seconds. Um, unless you are extremely caffeinated and high, highly energetic, I would not recommend jumping into like second charts. Um, it's just a lot of information to try to process and you're already trying to make decisions and find patterns and things. And that really just, I feel like it, it might be chaos. So I stick to at least the minute. Um, I really enjoy the one minutes actually. Um, but you can see here, we did break the nine or not the nine. We broke the 10 and 20. Um, we broke our 50 and now we're, we're selling off a little bit. So that's just a cool way to kind of use this. And then here we have support. We've already bounced off support here. Uh, so that would be where I would assume we would head next unless we get support somewhere else. Let's see. But yeah, this is a little bit of a sell off here for sure. Um, and the, the volume's not super heavy on Amazon either. Let's see, CRSP. All right, so we can fit this one out. There's our low and there's our high. So this is a really nice reversal um, that happened. Again, we banged our head up here twice this morning and sold off. That would have been a really nice, really you could have played both sides of this. That's a really, really nice stock. Um, we bounced and now we're rallying again. Um, and you can see literally as soon as this stock broke over that 50, your buyers, they came in. Um, really strong buying. Um, so I would just keep your eyes on this, but this looks like it is in a nice uptrend, um, a really, really nice uptrend. Um, this I'll keep your eyes on, see if this candle breaks up here. If not, this could be another sign of a reversal because that's almost, almost a Harami. Well, it is for now, but it's not over yet. So this could be a reversal, yeah. Let's see, but this is a nice, this is a nice little run up and you can see here how it bounced right off that 200. These moving averages, they really are game changers. Let's see, Airbnb. All right, so this is a nice double bottom here. All right. So looking at Airbnb right now, um, this looks like resistance here. Um, it kind of rejected it earlier and it retested. Um, so it looks like it's, it's kind of stuck for the time being. Um, but you, again, if you zoom in, um, you've got a little bit of a sell off here, but you've got your buyers holding it up over your 20-day um, EMA. So 
this is something you could kind of keep your eyes on. Um, one thing I will say when you're in a position, like let's say you were in it here, um, really, I wouldn't, I don't really like to exit my trade. Like here's a little example. You see a red candle here. Sometimes people see a red candle and they kind of freak out a little bit. Um, but unless you're retesting this moving average, uh, your 10 or your 20, um, I don't really panic. That's I'll really stay in a trade if I see something like this. Now, if I see something like this, I might head out. Or, you know, if I start breaking down below my nine, my nine, or not my nine, my 10, my 20, my 50, I'm not going to hold my trade, you know, long enough for it to break everything. I'm definitely going to head out. Um, here, for example, let's see if we can find a better example. Okay, so like here, for example, we're riding this up. We broke all our moving averages and we're trending up. Now here we broke our 50, um, we bounced off the 50, we broke it again, bounced off the 200, we're riding the 200 and here we totally break through it. So like, I'm not gonna ride, this is like riding with no, you know, it's like letting a baby drop the car. I mean, you don't wanna like just let your, your position crash out, just hoping and waiting for the, the moving averages to confirm anything. If you're in profit, um, just get out, you know, just lock it in and then once this picks a direction, there's a whole new play for you. Um, so yeah, I don't like to, you know, when I first started trading, I would really just kind of hope and wish that things would be different. Um, but you can always lock your profit in and then let this go on without you and then come right back in and ride this thing down. Cause this would have been a beautiful foot here. And especially if you would have swung it, cause it, it really fell. Um, same here. Um, if you would have been in profit here, you didn't have to ride all this out. You could have secured your pro your call profit here you know, gone to have lunch, came back, and now your, your put setting up, possibly. Um, there's a Harami, so our buyers are not done just yet. We'll see what they do. Um, do you guys have any other stocks you want to look at? I just really like, um, I found that like volume and volatility are like your best friend. They really are. Um, and it's just, you know, try to break out of that bias of always wanting to be a bull. Um, I know a lot of beginners, they, they see calls and they see dollar signs, but you should have that same attitude towards puts as well because um, they work just the same. We're just on the downside. Let's see, IWM. All right, so we were low here. And this thing, oops, that's the wrong thing. This stock here, if you look at open, the stock banged its head <laughs> the same spot like five times. So that's super bearish. <laughs> Just could not break this resistance here. Um, but you see it broke down below your 200. We broke the, the 10, the 20, and the 50. Um, you can see here, it bounced off your FIB and it retested this um, 50 and rejected it again. Um, it's, it's literally been retesting these all day and just rejecting. It's just really being sold off pretty hard. Um, now you have support here. We've bounced off support here and we've bounced off support here. Um, so now when we retest this 50, it means a little bit more um, to me because we've already bounced off support twice. So now I would really keep your eyes on this for an actual reversal. Um, it's not super strong. Like if you look at this green candle, um, this is not the most bullish candle in the world, um, but the buyers are trying. So this may very well reject the 50 again here, um, but that's something you would keep your eyes on for sure. Cause if it breaks over that, you could very well see more buyers to kind of step in and, and buy this price back up. Let's see. And yeah, if you look at the volume, you can actually see the buyers um, kind of stepping in. There's not very many of them, but they're, they are trying to buy this up. Let's see, Tesla. Tesla is a wild animal, <laughs> this stock. I used to scalp it a lot when I first started scalping, but once I really learned like candlestick patterns and charts, I learned that Tesla um, doesn't follow any of the rules. So it's a little bit more harder. It's a little harder to trade, to be totally honest. Let's see. Farlo and our, I'll keep clicking that. Sorry, y'all. All right, we're going from our low to our high. Um, one other thing I would add, um, you can do like the extended trading hours, like pre-market and um, after hours, uh, sometimes you'll get a little bit different uh, levels. So like if your stock had a different high, like you see how this was lower during pre-market and after hours, you could actually drag it down if you wanted to use those levels. Um, especially if you're wanting to like 
run calls or puts because that's going to give you different support and resistance levels and they are significant. So, um, you know, this stock was lower in the morning or sorry, it was lower after hours. So I would want to know that. Um, I would definitely want to know that. Um, but again, looking at Tesla, um, it did rally this morning, uh, sold off. You've got resistance up here. Um, and it, now it's just kind of riding the 200. It's bounced off it a couple of times today. Uh, there's a double bottom. Um, and now we have resistance here. So it's kind of like, let's see, it's over your, it's over your 10 and 20. So you may see some buyers step in. Um, it doesn't look like it has a ton of volume right now, I believe the volume has left the building. Um, it was there this morning. Um, we do have a lot of Fed reports coming out this week, or not this week, today, actually. There were a lot of Fed reports coming out today. Um, so you may or may not see a ton of volume. Plus, it's lunchtime, and it, we have a lunch dip. So um, I would say we rally this afternoon. We should see. Um, um, so ticker-wise, I would just say... Um, I don't, I don't really discriminate against stocks. Um, I really just like to go where the volume is. Um, my strategy, it pretty much works where there's volume. So um, any of the stocks on this list are really great jumping off points, to be honest. Um, and if you guys are familiar with like TD Ameritrade, uh, I actually do, I just started like back testing on there. And basically that allows you to paper trade on like previous trading days. And so there was a stock that I was actually watching um, and planning for and I back tested it all day yesterday. And like, I was like, I think $69,000 I made back testing that thing. And then this morning I actually traded it and I was profitable. So if you are someone who's like interested in the strategy, I highly recommend it. Um, you just log into your live trading account on Thinkorswim. You've got to be on a desktop. Um, and then in the top right-hand corner, there's a little button that says on demand. And so you can actually go back in history on previous trading days and you can paper trade, you can buy and sell contracts. You can do spreads, whatever your heart desires, um, and just you know get your strategies down pat. Um, and I would also say just start small. Um, just really start small. Don't try to compete with anyone um, that's trading larger amounts because you know those smaller plays they add up. They absolutely add up. And so um, just pace yourself. This isn't a marathon. You know, I mean, this is a marathon. It's not a race. But yeah, I would just say use Finviz. It's totally free. I don't pay for this. Um, this data is a little delayed. So especially when you're using like the technical indicators, if you're RSI, you know, sometimes you, I've, I'll come here and say like, okay, show me RSI that's overbought 90. Uh, there's nothing there right now. We can do overbought 80. Um, this is iTub. I don't even know what this is, but if you go here, um, that data is a little delayed. So you still wanna use your chart. Um, Finviz is not the end all be all. But this is probably, let's see what it's doing. All right, so this is heading down. Uh, so I can see my oversold, or sorry, this is oversold. Um, this is absolutely oversold. It's still selling off. Um, but now if you wanna watch this thing, you can kind of watch for reversal. Um, and this is something that wasn't even on my radar that could potentially reverse because it's oversold. Um, so I wouldn't say jump into it, just watch it. Um, just watch it and let the chart tell you what you're doing. And this is TradingView. Um, this is TradingView. Uh, it's actually free. You get three free indicators and there's a ton of ads. Um, you can do like a 30 day free trial. Um, I actually pay for it now because I use a lot of indicators but I didn't pay for it for a very long time. So um, don't feel like you have to pay for anything but I definitely think it's worth it. It pretty much pays for itself. No problem. Did anybody else have questions? I mean, that's pretty much all I have for today. If you guys do have questions, we have a ton of resources on um, investingbay.com and, uh, sorry, and also optionsbay.com. There's free resources, there's paid resources, there's tutoring. Um, we have Instagram, Options Bay and Investing Bay. And then you can also just shoot us a DM. We're happy to answer questions. I just wanna see everyone um, learn how to do this and be profitable. So thank you guys so much for having me.